Father, as we come to this part of the service, we thank you, Lord, for leading us and guiding us thus far down this road of life. But, Lord, as we would look into your word, I just pray, Lord, that use this vessel of clay so you would see fit. Lord, as we want, Lord, to walk in your light and in your ways, and now I commit this service in your hands in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. You can be seated. This is a uh, title would be the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord, part three. I know that uh, some things we repeat it, but sometimes there's things that that came in looking at this day of the Lord, there's other things that comes in with it, actually before the day of the Lord, which if we have time to get into it today, that's fine. If not, then I will deal with it later. But again, as we start, as we've seen that when that week, when that 75 days of God's wrath or it's called the day of the Lord. It's not all wrath right from the get-go from the first minute. It's a 75-day period. The first 30 days, God's objective is get man's attention on the earth. We've seen how that first God shuts off the lights. This is supernaturally. And because he comes with the cloud, just like he did in the days of Moses, as his presence comes towards the earth, it gives it a little shake. In Moses' day, it was just a mountain. But here he's coming for the world to deal with some things concerning the sinner at that point in time. We've looked at how that there's a lot of scriptures concerning Matthew chapter 24, there's Isaiah chapter 13, there's Revelation chapter 6, Revelation chapter 16, uh, on and on we, go, we, we can look at scriptures that pertaining to the coming of the Lord that day. But somehow we've got to put some reality in it. We can't say the whole clouds are darked out, we can't see the sun or the, star, sun or the moon, surely you're not going to see any stars. Because even though there's going to be a blood moon tonight, if it was cloudy, you wouldn't see a thing. So I'm, I know this is a bit of repeat to start with, but I'm going to be going into something much deeper here this morning. So as God shuts off the lights, this is to get man's attention. Then the next thing, because things are dark, now God brings to the place... He brings the spirit world. He opens up the spirit world. But in that spirit world, as man is on the earth looking up, it's not where the clouds are at, it's below the clouds. And so they see it lit up. And again, it's the spirit of God that lights it up, lights the spirit world. Because there's no sun or moons or planets in the spirit world. It's in another realm. And so as man is looking at it, now that has to be in this much, because if it was just dark clouds and you couldn't see the sun or the moon, I don't care how dumb the leaders of the world would be at that hour, you don't fight against a dark cloud. There's nothing, it's just a cloud. But as they see the spirit world and they see these angels milling about and more likely some saints milling about, because I want to bring in some details there. Lord willing, I don't know how he's going to go. I just, I've just i talked with it with uh, my brother and sister from Australia last night, and it is a deep subject. <laughs> it's, it's something, but yet, then again, there's things that God has, in looking at this, has brought out some 
more information concerning the coming of the Lord. Now, as the armies of the earth are looking at that spirit world, if you can picture yourself, you're on the earth and you're seeing this, you're in amaze and a, and, and a wondering, wow, what's going on? Now, all the while the spirit world is, is man is looking at it, the lights has been shut off. But somewhere the light has to stop from being shut off and opened up again. So when it has its effect of getting the armies to look, thinking it's a threat from outer space, I don't know what they'll be thinking, probably it's aliens, whatever they'll have in their mind, because it'll, the men, would, men of that hour, I better slow down, men of that hour will be godless. They couldn't care less. The Bible's the last thing they want to look at. But then God now, in order to look at the other scriptures that brings in other things that the prophets have wrote, written about that day, that dark cloud that hides the sun and the moon has to be moved away. Now men start to see the clouds, uh, see the stars. He sees the moon and he sees the sun. Now you are arriving somewhere around that 30 day period of time. All this is now transpiring that the clouds have been removed, and man thinks, oh, we got it made. Now we see the stars again. We, we're getting back to some sort of normalcy, but yet the spirit world, they're seeing some things. Now when I say they're seeing the spirit world, they're not seeing the throne area. They're not seeing where Jesus is at. They're just looking like Adam would have seen the angels in his day when he had access to the spirit world. The reason I'm saying that, because then you bring into Revelation chapter 11, verse 19, Revelation 5, uh, 15 and 5, it says, then heaven was opened. Opened to who? All the accounts I've heard is, those that died on, they go to be with Jesus. John on the Isle of Patmos, when he was brought into the future to look what was transpiring in 1963, he saw heaven, he saw Jesus. But because he was brought into the spirit world to see that part, that avenue. Now, well, we can turn to it, Revelation, one of those. Well, let's go to Revelation 11 and 19. As we read this, it's from verse 15 on down to verse 19, it's showing the approach to the day of the Lord when Jesus would be coming. If we look at verse 17, saying, it says, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which are, which was, and art to come, because thou hast taken unto thee thy great power and has reigned. Or in the old English it says has reigned. He's taken his power to reign. So time wise that God... The God Almighty has taken up his power to reign. You are now nearing the time where he's going to be coming. There's going to be some events that are going to unfold. And the nations were angry that thy wrath is come. And the time of the dead should be judged. And thou should give reward to thy servants, the prophets and the saints, and them that fear thy name, small, great, that shouldest, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the, world, the earth. So it's showing time-wise, you are now in the day of the Lord, not when the, the sun's blocked out, but you are now nearing the time prior to Jesus to actually make his descent. Now watch what it says. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there were seen in the temple 
The ark of his testimony. What is the ark of his testimony? All right. And there was lightnings, voices, thunderings, and an earthquake and great hail. Hold your finger on that one. Now we're going to go to Revelation chapter 15. Because these two scripture is all happening in the same immediate period of time. So in Revelation chapter 15 and verse 5 it says, And after that I looked and behold a temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. What is that that temple of the te- sorry what is the tabernacle of that testimony doesn't the scripture declare God temples in us we tabernacle in him so this tabernacle that's open is representative of the bride being seen at this point in time it says heaven was opened up at that point in time. In other words, the throne area where the bride would be, where Jesus would be, is not accessed to the man of the world when he sees the spirit world open. He just sees the angels and probably some saints milling about, Old Testament saints, white robes, and so forth. But the testimony of the tabernacle, it said it was opened It was not open in 1963 when John went up in the sense that John was in the spirit world. He could see it because he was brought there. But now this is going to be open up to the earthly recipients that are looking into heaven. Now the throne area is given access for them to see this. And all the while... Leading up to that, after the leading up to that hour, the clouds are removed. There's activity in heaven. You bring in Matthew now, chapter 24, verse 29 to 31. And we can go there. In Matthew 24, it says, immediately after the tribulation of those days. That's when the week of Daniel has finished. The the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The moon and the light to be darkened, that's right here in the beginning of that day of the Lord period of time. But the stars to fall... And the heaven shaken, that is going to be a little later on when Jesus actually comes. Because like I said just a minute ago, if the sun's darkened and the moon's darkened, you ain't going to see no twinkle, twinkle little star. Forget it. And the cloud that covers the sun and the moon at that hour in the beginning, it'll be dark as sackcloth, just like it was in the days of Moses. They had a hard time to fumble around. It wasn't just an ordinary cloud. It was a dark night. It was a real dark night. So you ain't going to see no stars in the beginning. But then that part of Matthew, it's God purposely written it in in such fashion that we have to look at the events in sequence that it makes sense. Because unless you've got x-ray special eyes, you could peer through through clouds and everything else and see a star. I don't have that, and I don't think none of us do, do at this point. But now, as the heavens, as the spirit world has been opened up, now God opens, allows them to see now the in heaven where the tabernacle and where Christ is at, where, where the bride is at. When that is happening... The clouds have to be removed. He's about ready to come. And we're here in Matthew 24. He talks about, And the, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. That's 
before the heavens is actually opened. That mankind can see Revelation 11 and 19 and Revelation 15 and 5. Before that happens, the sign of the Son of Man has come. That's in this period here. And then shall the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So it's giving you a summary. They're going, they're going to mourn. Jesus is coming. But then before he actually comes, it says here in verse 31, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, one end of heaven to the other. Well, I thought they were all around the throne. Verse 31 that we see here has nothing to do with the rapture. When we look concerning the rapture, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, 1 Corinthians 15, 52, Matthew talks about where one shall be taken and the other one left. One's at night and one's in the daytime. That shows they are opposite end of the earth. They're not in one geographical spot when that event is unfolding. But the key to understanding verse 31 is this. When Jesus comes, he's coming for the bride to bring her up. When he comes in his second physical coming, he's coming with the bride. So one is going this way, and the other one's going that way. And that's the key to understanding that 31st verse. Now, when he sounds that, when God Almighty says, sound that great trumpet, and gather from the four winds, his elect. Do you think when you, you and I, before that hour arrived, there's been a rapture? And in that rapture, we all going to huddle around Jesus Christ, and that's how we're going. That's how some picture shows it. But I'm saying here, bring in all the scriptures concerning that event. One shall be working in, in the field, he'll be taken. One be sleeping in the bed, he's taken. That's halfway around the world. And don't expect because when we have our resurrected body, you're going to travel at the speed of light. Hello? Only God can travel at the speed of light or beyond that. He's everywhere. If Michael, if... Gabriel, the archangel, took a while to go bring a message to Daniel, and he, yes, he was hindered, but it shows there's, it takes time to go somewhere to do something in the spirit world. All this is putting in and filling in Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. That's why he calls the trumpet. They're coming from the different parts of the world. Because when you and I go into a rapture, which is prior to that hour of the Lord's second, physical second coming, when he comes for the bride, and if we're going to be changed in the twinkle of an eye, you're going to be here in Moncton unless you took a trip with an airplane and you're in another country. And where is Jesus going to be? Is he going to hang around Moncton because you were here? No. He's going to be where ready to the place where he's going to descend above Jerusalem. Here the Jerusalem is a little ways. Oh, but I never heard that before. I know you haven't. But there's time we need to look at things now. So that verse 31 
It has nothing to do with verse 27 and 28. For verse 27 is concerning when Jesus comes for the bride is in verse 27 and 28. For as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. That's for the rapture. And for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. That brings it, I, I don't mean to throw too many things at you this morning, but uh, you can absorb it anyway. The Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now, verse 27 is actually the climax when the bride is made ready. That carcass is not just prior to the rapture. It's not just today or just only in 1963. That carcass is a symbol, it's a parable showing divine revelated meat. And that carcass will be hang lo there long enough for us to have that divine revelated meat till the time we receive our last revelation. We have had our thunders and prophesied the nation and so forth. Then Jesus is going to come like lightning all at once. And the rapture is not going to be over days and months, it's going to be immediate. The dead in Christ, they'll rise first, and we, our life are remaining, going to meet the Lord in the air. And say, Lord, wait a minute, you're in Jerusalem. Make, make, make me come a little hurrier. No, you're going to rise. We meet him in the air. We meet him in the spirit world, what it is. It doesn't imply we're going to meet him all other. Uh, oh, Jesus, I just made it. I came up here. I got in the rapture. Yes, you win the rapture. But we are going to go up in clouds, plural, to meet him in the air, to meet him in the spirit world is what it's talking about. Is this too deep for you this morning? So verse 31 has nothing to do with verse 27 or 28. First of all, it talks about he shall send in verse 31. In verse 31, this is where the trumpet's going to be sounded. It says, now watch this. There's some things to clue in. Sometimes it's like if you've never seen something before, like Marco Polo, and he had asked about them, who can make an egg stand on its end? And they all tried and they couldn't. Then he goes and taps it and this. it stands up. Well, anybody could do that. Yeah, but you had to see it first. So is it with this. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. It's the angel that's sounding this great sound of a trumpet. Numbers chapter 10 verse 4 talks about that God told him to blow one trumpet when he gathers the princes to get the the, the Israelis to come all together in, in a place in a military fashion or to gather the congregation. This here is the angel is sounding this trumpet. My Bible tells me, if you read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of our archangel and with the trump of God. Who sounds the trump? The angels? Or is it Jesus? Because you'll have John chapter 5, verse 25. At the sound of his voice shall all the dead rise, not given to an angel. And Paul talks about not trumpet. He said it's a, the last trump. He says it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. At the last trump is Jesus and given to him only to sound because he's the one that the Father has given the power to raise the dead. He did it in the, when he walked here on the shores of Galilee. Are we getting it? So, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. It's a trump, T-R-U-M-P. 
and the one that sounds it is Jesus. And all the other scriptures in, in the gospel, it shows that it's Jesus that's going to be sounding it. He's not passing out, yes, the Father's given me, but I'm going to give it to an angel down to do it. It's not. But here it says trumpet, not trump. That angel don't sound the last trump. He's sounding a great trumpet, yes, because he's getting the bride to come from the four corners of the wind of the earth, wherever we are, to come now to make our descent together like an army that's going to be coming down, and that's going to be happening right here. There's nothing that promises you and I when the rapture takes place, no matter where you are in the face of this planet, Zippo, you're there in Jerusalem, and we're all assembled at Jesus. Yes, we use that picture here, but it's how God has shown John. Where is it here? Yeah, here. That's what John saw in... 1963. Well, when the Lord gets ready to descend, what John saw, yes, there's, now I'm not saying where Jesus is, it's going to be void of people or saints, the Old Testament saints, the souls under the altar, and so forth. Yes, the sea of glass, well, the sea of glass. Yes, there's going to be those around there. Now, here's something else I can just throw in here. When Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, he went into the lower part of the earth. And after his resurrection, many of the graves were open in Jerusalem. That was to give witness to those that was in Jerusalem and I don't think it was Abel or Moses that came up to give witness to them. They wouldn't have recognized them if they saw them anyway. But it was those that would have been recognizable. It says some, it didn't say everyone. Now, after his resurrection, the others, yes, got resurrected, but they had never seen, seen, seen who they were. Now, mankind from the days of Adam till the time Jesus went into the lower part of the earth, there's some that had died at different parts and places in the world, wherever they were of those Old Testament saints. So that's why they're not brought up to give a witness there, because they're around where they came from. And when, we, and when those saints, when Jesus comes to rapture his bride, he's coming for something when he's coming to rapture the bride. That's before the. That's at the beginning of the week of Daniel, when he does come for that bride. Those deceased bride saints, they're not all huddled here. And then they go. Let's take the fastest route to go where our bodies are at. That's how we think. Sometimes it should be. More likely, they're not too far from where their body is if they know that the resurrection is coming. And that's the reason that's going to take time. That's why the Lord sends an archangel to us down here. And Jesus is dealing with the deceased bride saints to where they are at. And when he does actually make his descent, when that, that angel has sounded that great trump that gathered them from the four corners of the spirit world to bring them together to make that descent. Now, I'm not saying, on the other hand, some people think, well, if we're like we're here walking on the earth, and my speed is only this speed. It's a long time before I can get to Jerusalem. No, you'll have a resurrected body. I don't know what speed you travel at, but it ain't going to be the speed of light. There's still some things we need to, God has to open up. 
So as that is now underway, as that rapture is happening, they are where their bodies are. Because otherwise, look at it this way. If everybody's hanging around Jerusalem, and they have the knowledge when that seventh seal is peeled, they have that understanding in heaven. Don't you think it's time to maybe march where our resurrected body is? Huh? Don't you think? Of course. Then when they're changing the twinkling of a, uh, when they change, when they are, have their resurrected body, the dead in Christ rise first, it says they rise to meet him in the clouds. It didn't say we're all going to meet at one geographical spot. We meet him in the spirit world. And in the spirit world, you say, well, if I'm not close, I, I won't hear what Jesus is saying. When you and I hear of being on earth, which is a small comparison, don't we hear things from heaven? We're sitting in heavenly places. How much more what is being brought about by the Spirit of God in the spirit world is done instantaneously. Well, praise the Lord. All right. So now that great trumpet, remember, it's a trumpet that sounded, and that's another key right there. It's not given to an angel to raise the dead. But it's given to Jesus at the sound of his voice. And the Father has given to him the privilege and the authority to sound that trump, and the dead will rise. So it goes to show that verse 31 has nothing to do in the time of the rapture. But it has very much to do to gather all the saints to come down with the Lord Jesus Christ when he does come. Now when things are ready for him to come, we're going to come with the Lord for the destruction of the sinners and the beasts and, their, and the armies that are with him. With him. When that is going to be starting now, starting to unfold as we go down, it talks about the armies. When Jesus comes in Revelation chapter 19, we, it says he's coming with the armies, plural. He's coming with an angelic family, and he's coming with all the saints. Some saints will be visible. The Old Testament saint that has a resurrected body. The bride will be visible, but the bride is in order of authority, if you want to, or respect. She's right in behind him, coming. And as they make their descent through the earth, and I can hear, I have heard her before, well, I, I don't want to hurt anyone. I have a hard time killing a fly. No, the bride is not going to kill one sinner on the way down. You bring in Psalms 91, verse 8. Only with thy eyes thou shalt see the destruction of the sinners. The angels, on the other hand, especially the armies that are with Michael, in battles in the past and under the Old Testament, under, under the prophets, they killed more, angels did, than the Jews did with their physical sword. So why is he bringing those angels in there with him? This is all part and parcel now as he's coming down towards the earth. This is where the Spirit of God now takes the planet and is fulfilling 
Isaiah 24, verse 20. The earth is going to reel to and fro. When the earth reels to and fro, that's where it talks about that the sun shall go down at the noonday. Because if you're reeling back and forth, and the the sun is pointing this way like that, and you're reeling to and fro, you're going to have a very short day. But the fact that it's reeling, to those that are looking at the sun, it goes down at the noonday. Those on the other part of the earth, as they're looking into the sky, they see the stars, and it looks like they're fall- it has the appearance of falling. There's no way in the world a star can fall down and hit the earth, forget the millennium, forget the eternal age. It's over. But it'll have the appearance of falling. Because when we look at twinkle, twinkle, little star, and if you... If you have nothing to do and you want to spend some night doing something to check things out, look at the stars at night. They move so slow. Yes, in six hours it was there. Now it has moved to there and there's no trail to it. But if the earth is moving rapidly, those stars will have a trail to it and it'll appear like the stars are falling. All right? When that's happening... Now, the earth is filled with magna in the center of it. It's like taking a balloon, filling it with water. Give it a shake back and forth, and you'll see that skin of that balloon make all kinds of contortions. This now puts enormous pressure and and stress on the planet's crust. Now you have into play... I've got it here somewhere. The ring of fire. Where, where did it go? All right, anyway, I'll do it in words. Oh, here it is. The ring of fire, you can go to it on Google, or if you've got books. It tells you where the plates are hitting against each other. They are the most destructive place where you can live on the planet. Now that the earth is reeling to and fro, then these plates will not have a magnitude of 8.5, probably 15 or 20. And when that goes, erupts, then the islands, it'll be so devastating, islands will disappear because as the crust is moving. Mountain is going to be moved. And that's when that great earthquake, it talks about in Revelation chapter 16 now, where all the cities of the nations fell, that's where they, they fall over here. They fall here, not in the beginning, but this is all transpiring now. As the volcanoes are spewing up ashes in the, in the earth, now you have that blood moon that is transpiring. There will be ashes cover, covering it. And so the dark cloud that was in the beginning can't be there because you wouldn't see a thing anyway. You wouldn't see no blood moon. And that's when the blood moon will be seen. That's when the stars shall be seen. As the earth moves rapidly and violently, the air currents that are has a normal from east to west as, as, the, as it has an effect of, let's say, when it spins, it's just like if you spin that in water, some water sort of trails with it if it runs smooth. But if this is going jaggedly and moving, then the air currents, your atmosphere is in turmoil. And that's where you will now get great hail about the size of a talent, which is, for, whether it's 60 or 100 pounds, falling down to destroy... Sinner, sinful mankind. They'll say, hide us from him that comes because they know the destruction is coming. They'll say, you can't say a mountain. Mountain, hide me. No, it's an expression. So as they're looking for a place for safety, the earth is shaking. It's destroying a whole lot. The hail is falling. If they're not going for cover somewhere, 
Can you imagine something from 60 pound coming from a couple of miles up? I don't want I don't want to even be in an armored car. It wouldn't do you much good. Yes, it's going to be major destruction. It'll make a quick riddance of the six, almost seven billion people that's on the planet. But God's going to leave a remnant from every nation. God knows where strategically those he wants for the millennium. All at the same time, we have to bring in now, in the week of Daniel, that has just finished, in the middle of the week, God had that woman to move from Israel down to America. And when he does that, why would he want to bring her to America? Because as the plates are moving against each other where the ring of fire is over here, where the plates are separating, you have much, much less destruction. And on the East Coast, those, that woman is going to flee back from where she came from. New York, Montreal, Toronto. Yes, there'll be some destruction there too. But not to the magnitude where the major population of the world are at. That's why God has her brought there to that place in America, in that desert, to hide her there. In the wilderness, sorry, not desert. In the wilderness to hide that, that woman. Now the angels that are coming with the Lord, they might not have to slay a whole lot of people where the ring of fire is, but they'll have some things to do in the place where it's more milder. Because God is going to get rid of every sinner from the face of this planet. There is going to be sheep, a remnant that's going to go into that millennium, and some goats. Because it would be too close to do the cherry picking that is allow that because it has to be for a judgment when, the, uh, if you want to, when that day of the Lord is finished. There's, there's things that are opening up that we can see a whole lot more in the hour that we live in. But the key to understanding not that one remember only Jesus sounds the trump. No angel sounds the last trump. And when he comes for you and I, for the bride, he's coming for something. Because he's coming to take them away. But in the day of the Lord, when he comes with his angel, he's coming with something to destroy sinful mankind. And so therefore, as we see in that, in Matthew 24, verse 31, that, is, that has to, very much to do with this part here. Can you see the picture as it's coming together? And the other thing is too, when the rapture takes place, I know this picture here shows, oh yeah, everybody's going to be just migrated and go see the Lord. We meet him in the spirit world. That don't mean you're going to be physically alongside Jesus. I'm thankful you raptured me and I can put my arms around you. We're going up in the spirit world from where, from whence we've been changed. Just like the deceased saints, they get the resurrected body in where their body had been laid in the ground. Well, praise the Lord. There is some more things, but I don't want to throw too many things at once. Some may think, well, why are you touching that? It's been a month. 
I couldn't get away from it. I don't have all the details. The Lord knows all about it. Plus, it's not necessary to look at, well, okay, uh, yes, here on the 31st day, that's when this happens. I'm showing sequence of events as they unfold. God's going to have to use somebody somewhere, somehow, to open up some things. Because we can't be like the Branham movement while just sticks with the books. Thankful for what God brought through Brother Branham. We needed that very much. If we didn't know what the seals were, we'd be like the denominational world. And thank God brought an apostle like Brother Jackson. But was every revelation completed with Brother Jackson? No. Is there major things coming up? No, because God used him for some 40 years to open that carcass up to the bride. But there's yet a few nuggets as we are going through. Because we can't be like the Brandon movement. Now, don't go beyond what Brother Jackson said. Well, it can't be you. Well, it can't be who you have in your mind. God, no, God picks and chooses who he wants for whatever ministry he wants. Time will prove what's correct and what's not. God is not here to meet our expectation on the fivefold ministry. He expects the fivefold ministry to act like a fivefold ministry. And when that fivefold ministry gets into action, looking at the same things, are we all looking at the same things? I'd have to say pretty well everything is just, it's pretty near there. But there are yet a few details, things that God still has to work, work through. Because some things, as we were listening for the past 40 years, something might have been of less interest to you and you might have not picked up the details of things that was there. And nobody's exempt in the ministry. You know as much as God has opened up and revealed to every one of us. So I'd have to say this morning, we're moving on. If I really want to be like, I could be just do like the denominational church. I'm going to preach John 3.16. I'm going to preach John chapter 10. It won't offend no one. Oh, yes, you might tell you how you shouldn't live and things and such like. And those things are good and needful if we're not living right. Yes. And yes, it gets, it's part of being, it's a, it's a portion of being made ready for the inner person. But the garment that you and I are going to wear, that revelatory garment, we're going to need every word that God brings on ground in its season and time. Hindsight is twenty twenty, But who can see their day? I'm about due for a long vacation. The road gets worrisome at times. But look beyond the worrisome. Look beyond, look at the goal that the Lord has for us. When we go up in the rapture, will say, it's been worth it all. Well, I won't hold you up too much longer. There are a few other things that could bring in, but if you bring in too much, you forget too much. And I feel maybe I might have brought too many things this morning. But like some of the brothers last night, as the, the, 
brother and sister said last night, we might need to hear it again because we are now starting to see the details as they start to fit in. As the picture is being opened up. Is this a, will this save you? No, not as, it's the blood of Jesus Christ that saves us. But it's part of your garment. When we get to heaven, what a surprise that would be. Let's say the rapture comes, and then you change it in the twinkling of an eye. Hey, how come, why didn't we, aren't we all together and hugging Jesus here? To be with God, well, okay, there was, no, I better not, there's too many things. I'm thankful there's still some meat to look at. And salvation is for those that are hungry. That's why you're here. If you want to hear soda crackers and, and, and a glass of water every Sunday, that's fine. But I think you'd be bored out of your skull after six months. Don't you think God knows that? But from time to time, he gives us a morsel of meat to chew on. What would you do if all we had to do is to, all we had access and we were just only looking at the Brother Branham sermons? You'd get just as bored as they do in the denominational church in time. What do you think if we were just reading the contender year after year after year? Well, after 30 years, you might want to say, Lord, don't you have something more in your word? And he does. You can't hurry him, and you can't delay him when the time comes. He knows how to, to cause his spirit to impress upon us where we need to be. Praise the Lord. Okay, I've said enough for this morning. Good. Let's just stand, have the musicians to come at this point in time. to God He'll draw nigh to you Just read His word Pray to you Pray to you Don't be dismayed
Thanks. And 
the six meters. He asked him what he wanted, and he said, well, I've been praying for the baptism of the Holy Ghost for nearly 30 years. I can't do the He said, do you believe that you were really to have a morning experience? Oh, yes. The Lord changed my whole life and so on and so on. Good. And you've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the mission of sins and water? Yes. Then he said, you are a candidate, and you shall receive it. He laid hands on him, and I'll tell you, he fell like a ton of bricks on the floor, and he was praying in the Holy Ghost, loud and clear. And he says to the men, carry him up and put him on the platform next to the wall. And as he went along the line, he prayed for people, everyone was healed, and every once in a while there would be someone falling for the Spirit of God. And when he finished, the platform was filled with the bodies of all the slain. And the, and the platform would be two and a half, three times bigger than this one. I never forgot that. And those people, when they got up, they were telling me how they never forgot their experience and how wonderful it was. The woman told me the other day, she said, God's going to do all the things again, bring it new before us, before we come. I hope he does. I pray for all He's the one that initiates everything. And so we just have to follow. Let's just stand at this time. Brother Dale, if you'd dismiss us in a word of prayer this morning. Amen. Lord bless each one.